Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that is to the Dice Tower what Curb Your Enthusiasm was to Seinfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Judge Dredd, Helter Skelter, from Osprey Games. <laughs> For a key, hanging out of the bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, honey, yeah, you and me on the bus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there rolling me in my kid or they're in my pocket? But if they did that, be fine. In Judge Dredd, Helter Skelter from Osprey Games, two to four players take on the roles of the various factions found in the Judge Dredd comic books, including, of course, those kooky judges themselves. Each player faction will have five distinct figures with uh, their own, of course, stats and special abilities. And each player at the beginning of the game will go ahead and receive uh, ten location cards. These are cards that have numbers on them from, I believe, one to one hundred. The game board itself is a map of either the Hall of Justice on one side or the city blocks on the other side. Each location will be numbered to correspond with those number cards, and some of the locations will represent rubble, which can provide cover, or other spaces that are just out in the open. Now the first thing players do is they're going to look at those location cards and they're going to select five locations, one for each of their characters and place them face down next to each of their characters. Once players have selected each of their locations for their characters, then they will pass the five location cards they didn't use to the next player and they will then take their five fragments of reality tokens, that, which are in their color, and they will place them on the board in those locations that were not previously selected for their characters. On a player's turn, he has to do several things. First of all, he has to deploy a character, first of all, assuming he has characters that still need to be deployed, meaning what he will do is he will reveal the location that that character goes to, and then he will place that character in that specific location. Next, he can either deploy a second character, or he can take actions with a character already on the board. Now, players can take as many actions as they want, but they have to play a card for each action they take, and they've got a limited hand size, so that's not always the best thing to do. They start with seven cards, and that can get whittled down pretty quickly if you take a lot of actions with your characters. Now, the action cards that you have show each of the character icons in one side of the card, and some of them will be highlighted, meaning you can use that card for those specific characters. If it's not highlighted for that character, you cannot use that card, at least for the, any of those upper uh, standard actions or special actions as well. However, there is a wild card action at the bottom of the card that can be used by anybody. Assuming your player can use that card, you can go ahead and play that card to move. If you want to climb to a higher location, because there is some elevation issues here, you can uh, spend two cards to climb. Now, there will be certain kinds of ranged attacks you can play, and there will be melee attacks you can play. Of course, you use melee if you're in the same space as the person you're trying to attack, and you can, use, uh, you can fire at anybody across the board, assuming you have line of sight. Line of sight is blocked by these, those cover areas. It's also blocked by solid yellow lines, which represent walls or obstructions. So go ahead and you play those cards. Now, if you are being attacked on your turn, you can go ahead and you can play a defense. So if you're being hit with a melee, you can spend, of course, your own melee icon in order to defend against that attack. If you're standing in cover, you can play a cover card to essentially grab cover there. And if you can deflect the card, you can play a deflect to deflect the bullet as well. There will be some other special actions you can play at this time, and there will also be some special defenses you can play as well. Now, at any time during your turn, uh, once you have completed an action, another player can interrupt. If they have an interrupt card, they go ahead and they can play an entire action themselves, meaning they do all the actions, except they can't draw cards at the end of their turn, so they can't refill their hand. But uh, critically, they can gain the jump on you. If you're preparing to do something, they can interrupt and turn the tables on you. After they finish, turn order resumes as normal. Now, at the end of your turn, you go ahead, you pass the uh, turn marker, uh, the turn player marker, and then you draw cards. You can never have more than seven cards, but all things being equal, you can draw three cards up to a maximum of seven. 
So you're going around and you're fighting, and there's different ways you can gain victory points here. You're trying to gain five victory points, and how you gain five victory points is two ways. First of all, you're trying to defeat characters. If you can deliver the killing blow to a character, you can take that character and set it in your player area as a trophy. It marks that you've gained one point. Then, you can also try to pick up the various Fragments of Reality tokens, and you do that by, if you're on that space, if you spend three uh, cards that have the same icon that match your character, you can pick it up. If you have a character that has died, you can spend three cards that match that dead character and pick up that token. So the first player to achieve five victory points through a combination of defeating characters and picking up tokens wins Judge Dread Helter Skelter! Now there's a lot more going on in the game, but of course just a basic overview of the rules. Um, this is a, a brawler. This is a, you know, battle royale. You get your guys in there and everybody's fighting everybody and you're trying to be the first to gain those points. Now this card system here is very interesting. Again, this is a game that treats cards like their currency, but you can use them for attack, you can use them for defense, you can use them for just basic actions like moving. You are limited by your cards. You can spend a lot of cards on defense, or you can spend a lot of cards to interrupt, and when it gets to be your turn, you can't do anything because you don't have the cards for it. So you have to be very judicious in how you use the cards. And it's a very interesting system the way those icons on those characters are, are highlighted, meaning not every card is going to be used for everybody. And when you draw those cards, you may be in a prime position to do something you really want to do, but if you don't get the cards, you just can't can't do it. You have to wait a turn, that leaves you vulnerable, you have to wait till the next draw, and it's very interesting. It's, it's very, very interesting. Um, it's interesting, too, how players can interrupt, how they can essentially break in and attempt to completely screw over another player when they're not really expecting it, but of course you have to always expect the possibility that another player can screw you over with those interrupt cards. But at the same time, they're taking a chance, they're going to be burning cards. You've got to burn a card just to interrupt, you've got to be burning more cards to do what you want to do on your turn, so that can be very, very dangerous as the game progresses. Um, but this is a, a, a good a good brawler. It's a good tactical kind of getting around, get your objectives, take out the other guys. It It's fun because it's asymmetrical in a lot of ways. The different players have different powers, different abilities that come into play that can be very fun and quite surprising if you don't know them all. But it's it, it's very, very interesting the way these cards interact. Now this is a game, of course, from Martin Wallace, uh, who is not known for, for kind of combat heavy games. Again, there's no dice here. He's primarily known for Euro games, and that shows here. Um, but this is a good example of a fighting combat game that plays almost, that plays very Euro-y. Um, but I, I actually really, really enjoyed this game. Most, uh, I think we all enjoyed this game, uh, some to, to varying degrees, but we, we all enjoyed playing this game, my, my friends and I. I really enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Um, I'm not a huge Judge Dredd fan. I mean, I liked the I liked the movies. The St Stallone one was okay, but I really liked that last one. I was hoping they'd make more with Carl Urban. Uh, I really liked that movie, and I've never read the comics, but I think it's kind of a fun, gritty world, and I think um, this this IP works very well with this game. Now, as I understand it, this is part of a Wildlands game, which was the original system developed by Martin Wallace, and then this is... I don't know if this is just a new skin or there's some real new innovation here. I don't know, because I never played it, uh, Wildlands. But I do know I really, really enjoyed this game quite a bit. Had a tremendous amount of fun with it. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Judge Dredd, Helter Skelter, is yeah, buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of Larry David, I just wanted to say, take a minute to say thank you, Mr. David, for playing our very own Dracula. <laughs>